Good morning, all of you. Thank you, sir, for your kind introduction. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Ceylon College of Physicians, for giving me this opportunity. Today, I'm going to talk about hypertension in pregnancy. Global prevalence of hypertension in pregnancy is 116 per 100,000 women of childbearing age, relatively large number. And in Sri Lanka, nearly 10% of pre pregnant women affected by hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. 20% due to chronic hypertension and 80% due to gestational hypertension or preeclampsia. What are the challenges that we are going to face manage a patient with hypertension in pregnancy? Initially, establishing a diagnosis and uh, determine the threshold for initiating treatment and target blood pressure for the uh, particular patient. And uh, we have to avoid drugs with adverse fetal outcome while managing a patient with pregnancy in hypertension. And what is the optimum time for delivery? We have to uh, manage patient always with the shared care with obstetric team. Definition of hypertension in pregnancy. It is uh, systolic blood pressure of more than or equal to 140 and diastolic blood pressure of more than or equal to 90 mmHg. And severe hypertension defined as systolic blood pressure more than or equal to 160 and diastolic blood pressure more than no equal to 110. Sorry, can't see this uh, slide. Uh, there's a uh, pathogenesis of uh, preeclampsia. Uh, pathogenesis of preeclampsia uh, mainly depend on maternal and obstetric factors. There is uh, impaired uh, tropoblastic innovation and differentiation, which can, which can lead to uh, placental hypoxia and also uh, uh, which can lead to uh, problem with fetal growth development and oligohydroamniosis. And not, uh, it can uh, lead to reduction of, uh, sorry, it can lead to increase of uh, uh, soluble FMS-like tyrosine kinase 1 inhibitors, and also uh, it is lead to uh, decreased production of placental growth factor and vas vascular endothelial growth factor, and uh, which lead to uh, systemic endothelial dysfunction, and which cause hypertension, and also which affect uh, Hematologically with uh, placental, uh, sorry, aggravation platelet problem with platelet aggregation and also uh, which lead to hemolysis and also affect central nervous system with uh, causing headache and visual disturbances and also which cause edema and also uh, which affect uh, kidney uh, by uh, affecting glomerular, glomerulus and causing proteinuria, and also it affects the liver with uh, liver necrosis. Sorry, you can't see the slide. And uh, yeah, the slide is there. And uh, definition of gestational hypertension, which is new on cyst, systolic blood pressure more than no equal to 140 or diastolic blood pressure more than 90 mmHg, it should be on at least two occasions, four hours after 20 weeks of gestation in a previously normotensive individual without significant protein urea. And preeclampsia is defined as gestational hypertension with more than one, no, one new onset condition of organ no uretroplacental dysfunction indicate with protein urea more than 30 mg per 24 hour urine collection and protein creatinine ratio more than 0.3 and uh, lipstick reading more than 2 plus 
and also hematological abnormalities like uh, platelet count less than 150 microliter and presence of disseminated intravascular coagulation and hemolysis and liver involvement with the elevated transamination such as ALT or AST, it should be more than 40 international units per liter with or without right upper quadrant or epigastric abdominal pain. And uh, presence of progressive renal insufficiency with creatinine more than 90 micromole per liter or one milligram per deciliter and presence of pulmonary edema. And uh, symptoms of central nervous system dysfunction with new onset persistent cerebral or visual disturbance with potopsia, scotomata, cortical blindness, altered, altered mental status, and severe persistent headache. And presence of bureteral placental dysfunction with placental abruption, fetal growth restriction, abnormal umbilical artery Doppler wave for malysis, or intrauterine fetal death. And uh, is proteinuria mandatory for the diagnosis of patient with preeclampsia? Actually, proteinuria is not mandatory for diagnosis of preeclampsia. Patient with new onset hypertension, if patient has severe features, diagnosis of preeclampsia can be made. Uh, we will see what are those uh, severe features. Severe features of preeclampsia are systolic blood pressure more than no equal to 160 mmHg and or diastolic blood pressure more than no equal to 110 and presence of thrombocytopenia with platelet less than 100,000 and uh, impaired liver function with increased liver enzyme more than two times of upper limit of normal and uh, presence of renal insufficiency with serum creatinine more than 1.1 milligram per deciliter or doubling of serum creatinine without any other renal disease and also presence of pulmonary edema and also presence of central nervous system involvement with new onset headache which is not responding to medication and which can be uh, which can't be explained with any other alternative diagnosis And uh, what is the definition of eclampsia? It is a generalized seizure in a patient with preeclampsia that cannot be attributed to other causes. And uh, chronic hypertension, it is defined as uh, hypertension diagnosed or present before pregnancy or on at least two occasions before 20 weeks of gestation. And also hypertension first diagnosed during pregnancy and if it is persist for at least 12 weeks postpartum, also defined as chronic hypertension. And also another entity, there is a chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. Uh, there is sudden increase in blood pressure in previously well-controlled chronic hypertension patient. And uh, if there is new onset proteinuria, and sudden increase of pre-existing proteinuria in chronic hypertensive patient. And uh, significant new endorgan dysfunction consistent with preeclampsia after 20 weeks of gestation or postpartum. In this patient, we should su suspect uh, superimposed preeclampsia in chronic hypertensive patients. And uh, what are the risk factors of gestational hypertension? Nulliparity, age 40 years or older, pregnancy interval more than 10 years, and multipetal pregnancy, and a previous history of preeclampsia or gestational hypertension, and family history of preeclampsia, and preexisting vascular disease and preexisting kidney diseases, and a body mass index of 35 kilogram per square meter or more. In Sri Lankan women, body mass index is considered as 30 kilogram, kilogram per square meter. And uh, when we are managing a patient with gestation, gestational hypertension, level of blood pressure is very important. When systolic blood pressure is more than no equal to 160 and diastolic blood pressure more than no equal to 110, we should be treat the patient immediately. We should admit the patient to hospital and uh, we should arrange immediate blood pressure control with intravenous labital oil, 
intravenous hydrolysine or oral nipidipine. And uh, target blood pressure is uh, 135 by 85 mmHg. When uh, systolic blood pressure less than 163 and diastolic blood pressure less than 110, we can uh, watch and wait, the pay, wait before we start on treatment. We can uh, arrange close outpatient blood pressure monitoring at least twice weekly, and we should arrange urine protein plate, platelet count and liver transamination monitoring weekly and uh, placental growth factor based testing. And uh, we should counsel the patient about the features of uh, severe preeclampsia and preeclampsia. And uh, we should monitor fetal well being weekly. And uh, we should consider pharmacological treatment if blood pressure remains above 140 by 90. And uh, timing of delivery is very important. We should arrange shared care with the obstetrician, obstetric team. And uh, we should not offer plan early birth before 37 weeks of pregnancy. If blood pressure lower than 160 by 110, unless there are any other maternal or fetal indication for early delivery. And uh, postnatal care for patient with gestational hypertension, uh, we should measure blood pressure daily for the first two days after birth. At least once between day three and day five after birth. And uh, we should continue antihypertensive treatment if required. Preeclampsia, it is a complex medical disorder, affects five to seven percent of pregnant women globally, and uh, it can deteriorate rapidly. Therefore, we should identify this patient. Uh, early and should manage properly. And it can be diagnosed first time intrapartum or early postpartum period. And what, the, what are the major risk factors and moderate risk factors? Major risk factors are hypertension during previous pregnancy and presence of chronic kidney disease and presence of autoimmune disease like systemic lupus erythematosus or antipospolipid syndrome. And uh, type presence of type 1 or type 2 diabetes and presence of chronic hypertension. Uh, there are some moderate risk factors. These are uh, nulliparity, age more than or equal to 40 years, and pregnancy interval more than 10 years, and uh, BMI of more than or equal to 35 at first clinic visit. In Sri Lankan women, uh, BMI considered as more than 30 as a risk factor. And family history of preeclampsia and presence of multipedal pregnancy. And what are the three principles of management of preeclampsia? We should treat severe hypertension as soon as possible, and we should arrange close monitoring of maternal and fetal when we. Timing of delivery is very important, and uh, we should prevent uh, eclampsia, and we should arrange postpartum mentoring. Is there a place for antiplatelet in patient with preeclampsia? Yes, we can use aspirin 75 to 150 milligram daily. It is indicated from 12 weeks until delivery for women with the one high risk factor or two moderate risk factor for preeclampsia. Uh, definitive management of preeclampsia is the delivery. Timing of delivery is important. It is depend on the gestational age, severity of preeclampsia, and maternal and fetal conditions. If patient present with preeclampsia after 37 weeks of gestation, we can arrange initiate delivery within 24 to 48 hours of diagnosis. If patient present before 37 weeks of gestation, uh, we should uh, record maternal and fetal threshold for planned early delivery. Uh, threshold for planned early birth could include uh, following features. If patient have uh, inability to control blood pressure with, while using three or more classes of antihypertensive in an appropriate dose. And also maternal pulse oximetry less than 90% and 
progressive deterioration in renal function, renal function, and hematological abnormalities with hemolysis or low platelet count. And also presence of ongoing neurological features like uh, severe intractable headache and repeated visual scotomata or eclampsia. And fetal factors like presence of placental abruption and reverse end diastolic flow in the umbilical artery doppler or non-reassuring cardiotopography or stillbirth. How we are going to monitor the patient with preeclampsia during postpartum period? It is mainly depend on whether the patient uh, given birth while on antihypertensive or not on antihypertensive. When patient not on antihypertensive treatment and have given birth, we should measure blood pressure at least four times a day while the woman is in hospital and at least once between day three and day five after birth. When patient was on antihypertensive treatment and have given a birth, we should measure blood pressure frequently at least four times a day while the woman in hospital and every one to two days after discharge up to two weeks. And how we are going to manage a patient with eclampsia. We should arrange supportive care with uh, positioning, we can position the patient in left lateral position and we should give oxygen via face mask and we should gain immediate intravenous access and take blood for uh, investigation. And uh, we should give loading dose of magnesium sulfate. It should be programmed and uh, it should be given intravenously over 5 to 15 minutes. This should be followed by infusion of uh, magnesium sulfate it should be one gram per hour and it should be maintained for at least 24 hours after the large seizure. And uh, recurrent pitch should be treated with the further loading dose of magnesium sulfate, two gram to four gram. We can give intravenously over five to 15 minutes. Uh, definitive management for eclampsia is also the delivery. And uh, when we are managing a patient with chronic hypertension, we should arrange preconception management. We should arrange baseline laboratory investigations like serum creatinine, full blood count, and urine protein, protein creatinine ratio. If patient with renal dysfunction, we should arrange serum electrolyte, and also we should arrange liver transaminases as baseline investigation. And uh, we, we should review and optimize antihypertensive medication before conception. If patient is on uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blockers, we should uh, avoid this and we should change this to uh, medication compatible with pregnancy. And uh, we should evaluate for other comorbidities like presence of uh, high. Uh, diabetes mellitus and dyslipidemia, chronic kidney disease and ischemic heart disease. And uh, patient with chronic hypertension, we should arrange prenatal care. We should arrange ultrasound scan to estimation date of delivery. And uh, we should give low dose since 12 to 16 weeks of gestation. And uh, if patient is having uh, poorly controlled blood pressure, if uh, patient is having well-controlled blood pressure, we should arrange blood pressure monitoring every two to four weeks. After 20 weeks of gestation, we should discuss about the features of preeclampsia with patient. And after 20 weeks of frequent evaluation, 28 weeks, frequent evaluation of fetal growth should be done. And also in chronic hypertensive patient, timing of birth is important. Usually patient with chronic hypertension do not offer planned early delivery before 37 weeks. With uh, patient with blood pressure, if uh, lower than 160 by 110, with or without antihypertensive. And unless there are other indication for delivery. And uh, patient with chronic hypertension, we should arrange postpartum care. 
we should measure blood pressure daily for the first two days after birth and at least once between day three and day five after birth. And uh, we should discuss about blood pressure pressure lower than 140 by 90 mmHg. And uh, we should educate the patient about the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia and severe hypertension. And uh, we should encourage breastfeeding. And we should discuss about contraceptive methods and future pregnancy plan and important of uh, planned pregnancy in the future. And we should arrange follow-up for these patients. And antihypertensive that used during pregnancy are labetalol, hydrolysine, nipidipine extended release, and methyl dopa. And uh, oral antihypertensive that we can use for postnatal period and breastfeeding uh, female. These are enalapril, nipidipine, or amlodipine, atinolol, or labetalol. And uh, we have to avoid using diuretics or angiotensin receptor blockers in women who are breastfeeding or expressing milk. There are some new biomarkers related to preeclampsia and severe features. Usually, it is difficult to predict when severe features of preeclampsia will develop. Uh, assessment of soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase 1 and placental growth factor in maternal blood may be useful. And also, there are trial evidence. One is called Parrot trial and PRACIS study, which has assessed uh, placental growth factor based test as part of diagnosis of severe preeclampsia. In parrot trial, they have assessed uh, uh, pregnant women with gestational age of 20 weeks plus 0 days and 36 weeks plus 6 days. And uh, they have assessed placental growth factor. When placental growth factor more than or equal to 100 picogram per ml, and it is considered as normal, and this patient has returned to normal uh, antenatal surveillance. And when uh, placental growth factor is more than or no, equal to 12 and less than 100, uh, it is a uh, placental growth factor level is low. And these patients should manage closely and monitor closely and should arrange uh, frequent surveillance. And when uh, placental growth factor level is less than 12, it is considered as very low level. And uh, this patient should admit and uh, closely monitor. And there is a crazy study. It has uh, conducted among pregnant women in hypertension in the United States hospitalized between 23rd and 30th FMS like tyrosine kinase 1 to uh, placental growth factor ratio of 40 has uh, predicted the development of severe preeclampsia and also adverse outcome and delivery within two weeks of testing. And a woman with this ratio less than 40 had a 5% chance of developing severe preeclampsia within two weeks. Alternatively, if uh, this ratio is more than or equal to 40, woman has high risk of de developing severe preeclampsia with a positive predictive value of 65%. And this is my end of my presentation. And these are take home messages. Any pregnant woman with severe hypertension need admission and treatment. And preeclampsia is the severe life threatening complication of pregnancy. And protein urea is not mandatory for the diagnosis of preeclampsia. Delivery is the definitive treatment for preeclampsia and eclampsia. And uh, magnesium sulfate is the drug of choice for management of eclampsia. And placental growth factor will play a major role in the early diagnosis of preeclampsia with severe features in the near future. And these are my references. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. 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 Thank you, Dr.